All right, in today's video, we're gonna be recapping a little bit of an arcade restoration slash modification project I've been tinkering with for a couple of months, uh, namely because it took me like 60 days to get replacement artwork, so it took longer than expected to actually get this video out to you, but if you know me, you know that I'm a huge Sega fanboy. Daytona USA was one of my childhood favorite games. Absolutely loved playing it in the arcades. Been after this one for quite a while. Finally found one, and uh, ooh, it was a little bit rough to say the least. So uh, it definitely went through some stages of restoration and it ended up as a modification. And I'll put timestamps down below if you wanna skip ahead, but uh, we'll go ahead and start with the ugly portion and I'll show you what the machine looked like and the condition it was when I picked it up. All right, so I got yet another cheap arcade pickup this time, Daytona USA. This is the often unseen upright version. Uh, definitely something I was interested in picking up. Huge 90s arcade fan. That was my era. So obviously Daytona USA, something I wanted to add to my collection. I already got cruising. I already got San Francisco Rush. So I was only really missing Daytona USA as far as the perfect trifecta, at least in my opinion. Got this for an absolutely steal of a deal. $125. Guy said absolutely nothing works on it, you know. But, you know, for the cabinet alone, I was like, okay, $125. I can obviously replace artwork, all that kind of stuff, and if nothing works on it, then I can just turn this into a MAME racer, and it's still worth the, the price of admission for me personally. So, one thing that I was really curious about, though, is when I was looking at the pictures, I saw this. Daytona USA 2 Battle on the Edge marquee, and I was like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, Daytona USA runs on, you know, Sega Model 2. Daytona... Two ran on the Sega Model 3 platform, so you know, not necessarily compatible, and they definitely didn't make a stand-up version of Daytona 2, so I was like, oh, that's weird. Maybe they lost the marquee and somebody just threw it in there. I uh, found this in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. Story was that it used to be in a, a roller skating rink for many, many years, but uh, it is absolutely filthy. It's absolutely disgusting, as are most projects I pick up, and that's why I get them for so cheap. Um, it is definitely just filthy, filthy, filthy. Uh, Surprisingly though, no one drilled out the locks. In fact, I actually found the key hiding in the back. So I was able to uh, <laughs> unlock the doors. And, you know, got stuff hanging out, wires, old bulbs that I need to replace. Coin counter definitely shows this thing is uh, seeing some play, some use over the years. Close that up. Obviously, you know, the old security bar holes, I'll fill those in and repaint everything. Let's see if we got anything hiding under here. No, yeah, nice little, wait a minute. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the first time I've ever found money in a coin bucket. A buck 25, so scratch that. I told you I paid $125 for the cabinet. No, I paid $123.75, if my math is right, which it probably isn't, but oh well. Obviously, this is all dirty, filthy. Pedals, shifter, artwork on the control panel, for the most part, it actually looks pretty good. It's cracked along the bottom here from years of opening and closing. Uh, definitely need to replace this little sticker. Got water damage, discolored. Um, you can tell just looking at this marquee. So like, that's the color this Daytona USA 2 marquee should be, bright yellow and after years of being cooked, it looks awful, awful, awful. Let's go ahead and round back, and this is why I got super excited when I opened it up after I bought it. That's a Sega Model 3 board, absolutely. I mean, this is truly a Daytona USA 2 uh, game inside this Daytona USA cabinet, which is absolutely unheard of. Uh, so somebody did some Frankensteining, put a Model 3 machine in here, uh, and I assumed at one point it worked, but uh, looking at the monitor, it is absolutely dead. The tube has lots of burn in. Um, somebody's definitely did some Frankenstein repairs, but there's broken stuff. Uh, I'll have to pull that out, but I think this monitor is toast. It'll, it'll need to get donated to somebody and I'll have to find a, another monitor option down the line. But one thing I did do is I plugged in the VGA cable just to make sure everything was, you know, I don't know, dead as, it was advertised, nothing would work. Powered everything on and heard some things popping and clicking and checked some wiring. Lo and behold, flipped the switch. It does work. Oh my God, it actually does work. The game, everything booted up successfully. 
the VGA cable plugged into a little LCD monitor. The game popped right up. And this is you know, your standard kind of like midway racing one. And obviously it needs some help because it's got all sorts of looseness. Shifter, surprisingly feels sturdy, which uh, actually kind of blew me away. Most of the time those things are the first thing that break. Uh, this side art on this side, definitely faded. So wherever it was, it was definitely getting some sunshine. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. I'm going to replace it anyway. Same thing, T-molding. It's all worn out and just looks old and dirty. So new T-molding. I'll put a LED bulb back there. Don't have to worry about that. Oh, what's up, Mr. Spider? Uh, gotta love opening these old machines and just the cobwebs and the rat poop and the mice droppings and all the surprises you find inside. But for all intents and purposes, this is a working Daytona USA 2 in a Daytona USA cabinet. And that's not all. Speaking of, like I said, slightly rare to see the upright version, even more rare to see this silly thing with it. So if you've never seen this, this is the, the upright stand slash pedestal that connects to the bottom there, slides in there, and then you can play seated on this on the arcade. Uh, but this thing is just as beat up and abused. You know, as you can see, it's kind of bloated from years of moisture. I definitely got uh, lots of cleanup work to do, lots of uh, dirt and grime, but you know me, uh, I kind of enjoy that side of things. So let's see if we can spruce this up, shall we? So at this juncture, it really became a, a fork in the road, choosing paths where to go with the restoration slash modification. Uh, at this stage, I've got everything up and running. It was a fully functional Daytona USA 2 arcade in a Daytona USA stand-up body. However, there were some caveats to that. Number one, uh, there was no force feedback. Daytona USA 2 does have force feedback, but whoever put Frankenstein, you know, this Daytona USA 2 board inside this Daytona USA cabinet, well, they didn't bring over the force feedback functionality whatsoever. So essentially didn't have that experience with the uh, stand-up machine. And that's something I definitely wanted. As far as replacing the artwork, there wasn't an existing Daytona USA 2 stand-up cabinet. So there was no artwork to be had. You know, if I was going to get replacement artwork, it was going to be for the standard Daytona USA cabinet. Uh, so I, I didn't want this hodgepodge, you know, Daytona USA 2 type of thing. And then, of course, I had to do a lot of work on the body of this cabinet. Like I said, it was filthy, disgusting, cleaned it all up. Uh, repainted the whole thing so I gave it a nice new coat of black paint uh, replaced that crusty old black tea molding with yellow uh, that's not how it originally was you know black was the stock one but I like bright colors um, I'm a sucker for that I will admit guilty as charged so I want some bright yellow tea molding I think it you know contrasts and pops really well with the, the black uh, on the flooring, I got rid of the old rubber matting because it was falling apart and crusted and just disintegrating. Uh, replaced it with some diamond plating that I know will last a long time. Painted that black. Uh, painted the pedals black because I didn't want everything to be black and then have some weird rusty silver pedals coming out. And then when it came time for the arcade pedestal itself, I basically had to rebuild it, that entire platform. Um, there was no salvaging it. All that wood was bloated, falling apart, chipping away. So I, I rebuilt that entire thing. Uh, went to the hardware store, got some uh, wood paneling that was already, you know, pre-coated and everything. So that's great. Uh, my wife was actually using my saw horses for a garage sale type thing that she was setting up at the time. So I had to uh, do some MacGyvering and uh, create a table saw area out of my child's uh, little little tykes picnic table which it worked but uh definitely not recommended but either way got it all set and done recreated the platform rebuilt it got it all cleaned up got it all repainted uh put new tea molding around the pedestal seat itself so it's all gussied up and it looks nice now um so everything's functional really it all boiled down to i was just gonna have to gut this thing and namely a lot of that had to do also with the crt monitor just being absolutely toast not only did it have a lot of tube burn in uh, when i got back there and started inspecting the chassis and everything i found out that the tube itself had been necked uh, somebody broke the neck there it had a bunch of broken components on the chassis i could replace the components on the chassis but the tube itself was toast and at that point it was just like okay I, I know where I'm going with this project. I'm going to make this uh, a computer emulated, you know, multi-game racing machine. So what I ended up doing is first I replaced the monitor with the 26 inch Unico LCD arcade monitor. It has the 4-3 aspect ratio. 
uh, had to create my own little monitor housing and I made sure I made a lot of measurements and uh, I built some brackets where essentially this monitor was going to be in line with exactly the same position that the old CRT was. That way I could reuse the standard Sega arcade bezel that came on this machine and make it look as close to it really truly did with the CRT monitor in there. Uh, this monitor looks great, plays great, uh, had no issues whatsoever. I've got it connected up via HDMI to a mini PC. Uh, I've used this mini PC uh, for emulation products in the past. It, it's great. It's very small, compact. It plays pretty much anything I could hope for. Old arcade racing games, Sega Model 2, Sega Model 3. I've even got you know the upgraded Daytona Championship Edition, which is essentially a HD remaster of the original Daytona USA game. I've got Techno Parrot games on there, updated Windows games, you name it. This thing will play pretty much anything and everything. Uh, uh, one last big decision I had to make involved the uh, steering because, like I said, didn't have force feedback. Uh, I wanted force feedback, so I was kind of limited in what I could do without making major modifications. So I went with a PXN uh, steering configuration, and here's one of the main reasons I went with that. Um, you could take the steering wheel off. That's right. It unscrews on the back, locks in there and everything, but... The ability to take the steering wheel off allowed me to essentially reuse the hole that already existed for the standard arcade steering wheel that was there. I did have to kind of route it out a little bit and widen the hole because this was just a little bit wider in diameter than the standard hub was for the arcade wheel itself. But most, you know, Xbox, Windows, steering wheel, driving controls, everything is one solid hub and base. You know, the steering wheel is attached to the base. If I tried to use something like that, I would have had to cut, you know, a basketball size hole in the control panel and that was something I definitely didn't want to do. So after a lot of careful measurements and everything, I was able to mount the body and the feedback motor for this PXN uh, and now I've got full functionality. I've got one of the more uh, robust force feedback systems of all things you can buy on the internet right now. It has one of the largest motors out there so I get all sorts of crazy intense force feedback. And as I mentioned, I did have a lot of downtime as far as waiting for that artwork. So I spent that downtime to uh, basically configure the force feedback settings for each and every one of the games I have loaded on my system. Um, each one plays different than another, so they're all unique. Uh, I tried to get them as close to the arcade experience as I possibly could. So some games are very intense with their force feedback. Some are lighter than others because that's the way they were in the arcades. Um, but everything feels great. I love the steering wheel. It's got a nice, you know, velour feel to it. Much better than that hard, um, just clanky plastic hap style steering wheel that we get. Um, got paddle shifters. Don't need to use them if I don't want to because I've programmed every game on there to still use the four speed transmission. Uh, but there are some games that are a little bit newer that do have more than four speeds. In that case, I programmed the paddle shifters, but Took me a long time to tinker and playing with it, but by God, I've got basically any and every racing game I could ever want to play with force feedback on a true arcade machine. I used an iPack USB encoder to get all my controls working, so I still have my uh, accelerator and brake fully functional analog signal going into the PC. I've got full functionality of my shifter. I've got full functionality of my view buttons, my change buttons, my start buttons, everything. Everything works. And of course, after everything was cleaned up, repainted, looking nice and neat, I had the arduous task of getting the old side artwork off. So a lot of scraping, a lot of razor blading, a lot of heat gunning to get that old side artwork off. Uh, then there was the sticker residue, which is another nightmare. And then of course, sanding everything smooth, filling some holes there. Finally got everything nice and neat, looking ready. Got the new side artwork in after like I said, almost two months of waiting. Uh, put it all on, it looks great now, so I now have bright, shiny, new, smooth, without issue, non-faded uh, side artwork there.
had to get a new marquee. No one makes a uh, Daytona USA stand-up marquee. Uh, it's just like I said, it's not a prevalent machine that's out there, so there's not a, I guess, big enough market. Um, asked a couple people if, if they could make it for me, and a lot of them said no. So I ended up just making my own. Uh, put some LEDs back there so it illuminates, looks nice. There's a subtle difference. Mine says race leader. The, the OEM one never did, but I went ahead and included the little race leader section there. And the great thing about it, when it was all said and done, I ended up parting out the main PCB for the Sega Model 3 board, uh, the steering components and everything that I pulled from this machine. I ended up selling it for almost six times more than I paid for the machine itself. So all in all, invested, I think I only have less than $200 in this project now. And I can't tell you just how thrilled I am with how it turned out. My ability to play all these amazing arcade racing games, have force feedback on an actual arcade cabinet in my home. It's just, it's a great experience and it's a great feeling. And I absolutely loved how it turned out. That's it, that's in a nutshell. Guys, if you enjoyed the content, let me know if uh, you've got any suggestions on some racing games I can maybe add to this collection because I'm still kind of fine tuning it. Let me know some of your favorites down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. Really means a lot.